I want to show you what are the most common places for Audi B8s and B9s to lose coolant. My Audi is uh, it's a facelift B8.5. You can see the lights. Uh, Oro Quattro, two liter turbo diesel engine. The engine number is CNHA. It's uh, it's also called uh, 2.0 Ultra which is the, mo the most powerful one, the 190 horsepower. For quite some time I had a small leakage internal because I checked everything. Normally if you have external leakage, that's where you start from the expansion container, then you go through the hoses, radiators down there. On the back you have also a couple of hoses that you need to check, but if you don't have the smell of, a, of a coolant, then the leak is most likely internal. So what first you want to do is do a pressure test. There is a pressure test that is done through the expansion pad. And then the results can be either, either you have a leakage inside the block, the engine block, or you don't have it in here. So let's talk about it. So if once, once you're done with the pressure testing and make sure they do the proper pressure testing, the, the car needs to be cooled down they need to load it with pressure through the expansion tank and then leave it overnight. Then in the morning, they need to pull the plugs out for the uh, cylinders and check for leakage uh, inside. If you have leakage inside, just like I did, then that means a couple of things. You have either, uh, you start from top to bottom when, when, you, when you do that, when you do the checkings. First, the intake manifold needs to be taken out completely. You put it in a bucket of water and pressure test it. If it leaks, it will, it will have bubbles when you, when you pressure test it. Then if that's the problem, you change it. That was my problem right here. That intake manifold, it's quite a bit of work because you can see a lot of gas uh, pipes and coolant pipes and all sorts of electrical pipes goes over it. It's hard to get because you have to go underneath it. Um, then, if that's not the problem, of course you have the e, the high pressure EGR here and a flap, which also can be checked uh, to make sure they're not leaking. But let's imagine that this is not the problem. You keep going down. The, step. the next thing is the gasket, the head gasket, which of course you're gonna find out only when you open the the top cover. And then the third option is the block is cracked, which is the most expensive option. So those are the, I think, three, most, three four most common issues for internal uh, coolant leaking in, in, when, when it leaks inside the cylinders. There is another thing though to check. If you don't have, when you do the pressure test through the expansion tank and you don't have any leakage inside, you want to go underneath the catalytic converter. There is a low pressure EGR. That one can cause also issues and uh, it needs to be changed. That's quite a bit of work. Um, this will cost you between five and eight hours of work. This one to be taken out. This one is even more. This one is about seven to eight hours uh, to get down there. At least that's what I was told. I'm not a technician. I'm just telling you what exactly we did. Um, <clears throat> a guy that I know is a very good uh, uh, Audi tech. He has his own company now and he explains everything to me in details, which I love because I'm also a technical person and I need to know what, what people will be doing. Um, yeah, that's about it. Now I will switch and I'll show you the part I'll take it out of the, which is uh, right here, actually, you can see it, that's the part, that's the manifold. I'll, I'll, I'll show you where the, the leakage was, uh, there is a radiator inside, there is a big radiator, this, this part here in the middle, is that why it goes through the whole thing, that's a radiator that can leak and have issues. Uh, one of the symptoms was... Uh, <coughs> In the beginning, the leakage was very small. We're talking about 3,000 3, kilometers. For 3,000 kilometers, 
it leaks only 300 grams. 300 grams is from maximum to minimum. That's, that's only that, so it's not much. And if you divide it per kilometer, then you calculate the average consumption, it's a gram per liter of gas, of diesel. So you will not have any issues while driving the car. No smoke, of course, with such a small amount of leakage, you won't have anything. You just notice that slowly, slowly over time, the the coolant, the coolant will start dropping. But at some point, it started leaking much faster for, especially in the city. You see, this part, it, one thing will tell you that maybe it's this part is when you drive in the city and it consumes more than when you drive longer on the highway. It was di day and night, uh, the difference between the two consumptions. So in the city, it will do, uh, the last time it did 300 kilometers, it did 300 grams, which is, we're already to 10 grams per, per uh, uh, liter of diesel. And uh, on the highway, I passed more than a thousand kilometers with the same, with less actually of that consumption. So it's, if it, if in the city it consumes way more, most likely this is the problem because here is the part. That's the manifold, it's just like that. These are your four cylinders. It cools the air, so this is the radiator that leaked. And guess which side was leaking, huh? Yeah, this one. You see, it's much cleaner. The, the, the coolant will actually clean your, uh, clean your uh, uh, burnouts. So yeah, you can vi visually see it's, it's pitch black here. That's where the coolant was leaking. Yeah, you can see the, the parts. Everything was clean here. I wanted the part so I can check also what the, the EGR was look like. Well, at least the, the airways for the, for the EGR, that's where the EGR, the high pressure EGR sets. Everything was clean. The car is 170,000 kilometers, above 170,000 kilometers, and everything is uh, uh, working fine. So no blockages of, uh, what do you call it, ash. So this part, when we did the test, uh, I forgot to mention something interesting here. When you do the pressure test, uh, if it's this part, most, most likely when you shut down the car, two of the valves will be open and two will be closed. That's what happened here. The second and the fourth valve were full with coolant. The first and third one, there was nothing. So that tells us that it's most likely go coming from above and uh, getting into the cylinders only on the open, uh, with the open valves. So this is the schematic of the part, um, the intake manifold. Uh, let's talk about some other test results and what they mean most likely. So like I said, when I did the pressure testing here on this uh, part, we had second and fourth cylinder. Normally your car does that. Uh, first and third are going up and second and fourth are going down, uh, taking air in and, and, uh, and petrol or diesel or gas. So with me, that, that pointed that second and fourth being full with uh, coolant and first and third not being full at all, uh, made us thinking that, hey, it's, this is not the gasket and this is not the head. It's, going to be very absurd to be the gasket or the head being cracked only on the second and fourth cylinder. So let's say the result, um, if the result, when we did the pressure testing, uh, had f only the first cylinder, let's say only the first cylinder had coolant. Well, that can mean a lot of things. Uh, it can be the gasket, it can be the, the head can be cracked. Um, yeah, it can be all of those. Uh, if it's the first and second, again, you can have uh, a crack in between the cylinders, maybe um, it can be the head itself or the gasket again. But like in my case, if it's the second and the fourth only and the first and third did not have any coolant in them, most likely this is the part that you need to replace. Well, that's all. I hope I uh, helped you in some way. Um, with the mysterious cool and internal loss. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe and like. Thank you.